Jig fishing really is one of the most important parts of any type of lure fishing, you know, because it allows you to cover a whole lot of water that maybe you couldn't do with drop shotting or other styles of fishing. The jig can be small, it can be big, it allows you to cover the top of the water, the bottom of the water, you can fish it static, you can bump over structure, it really does cover a whole multitude of different types of angling and hopefully today we'll show you a little bit more about jig fishing and how to go about it. Right, so jig fishing, as I've already explained, jigs, what is a jig? Well, they come in all shapes and sizes, and I like to carry, I like to keep it minimal, because don't forget, they are, they are quite heavy if you start carrying tons around. So what I like to do is I like to know the kind of water I'm gonna be fishing, and then I carry a, a load of different weights just to go through different depths of the water. And if you have a look in this box here, I'll keep them all pretty organized. I've got ones from three and a half gram, four gram, three and a half, five, seven, 12, a range of fives, which is popular. And you'll see I've got more of these ones because these are my favourite jig heads. They're called Shirasu. And what they are, unlike any other jig head on the market, is that they are ultra sharp. I mean, these things, I take them out of the packet and I'm quite anal about it because I put them under a magnifier every single one. I need to know that I can set the hook every single time. And these are the best out of the packet by far. So as you can see, I carry a lot of these. And one thing you will notice as well, is that they're quite small compared to the jigs that I see a lot of people using, they're huge massive hooks. Now these fish that I'm targeting can be anywhere from eight ounce to you know, five pound perch or even 60 to a metre a meter long pike. So these jig heads have to be sharp and they have to be quality. And the sizes is based really on what kind of depths that I'm gonna fish and I'll cover more of that later. <music> Okay, so jig fishing, what equipment you're gonna need? Well, pretty much you've probably already got it, but I'll just run you through what I use anyway to give you an indication of what I'm using today. And uh, the rod wise, you don't have to go out and spend this kind of money again. It's, um, it's a Daiwa AGS Ajing, an import from Japan with a tubular tip, which gives me a real good feel on absolutely everything. And rating wise, it's one to 12 grams, so it pretty much covers me for absolutely everything I wanna do. I wouldn't use it on reservoirs when I've gotta use 20, 30 gram, but for everything I wanna do on canals such as today, this is perfect, it's just up for the job. Reel wise, I always go small on reels, thousand size reel, I don't know what it is. I, use a, I do a lot of fishing throughout the day, and by that I don't mean I'm fishing all day, I mean I like to change and I like to fish. My lure in the water is gonna give me more of a chance to catch a fish, so it's always out there, and I want a light balanced outfit. So I use a thousand size reel with a pretty good drag system on because when you're jig fishing, they do seem to give you a good old knock on the jig. Braid wise, I've got 10 pound braid on this one. I've got different spools. I use 10, 25 and 30 when I'm jig fishing. And then on the important end, because there's pike present and with jig fishing, really you are probably targeting pike as well as perch, is uh, I've got a titanium trace on here. I'm not sure how long it is. It's, uh, it's probably about 15 inches that one, but a titanium trace. And I've attached that to 20 pound fluorocarbon and then I've attached that to my braid via a very simple knot. So I've got everything absolutely neat and tidy. And then, of course, I've got my jig, which I'll run through in a bit. So jig fishing lures, what type of lures to use? Well, because fundamentally jig fishing is either retrieving at a pace, jerking up, letting them drop. I like a lot of tail movement in as well, as opposed to drop shotting when I like a kind of stick tail where I want it to just like jiggle. These have got like what's called a paddle tail. Now, if you have a look at that lure in particular, this is a Norris spoon tail shad. And it's called a spoon tail because if you have a look, it's got a bit of concaveness in that, in that tail there. These are very popular and one of my favorite lures for this kind of fishing. Because if I can explain to you, most of you are already gonna know this, but what it's doing, it's doing a lot of movement in the tail. And because I've got the weighted bit at the front, I'm pulling this lure down and I wanna catch really on the drop. That's when I like to catch them. If you watch them drop, this tail's design, it's so loose that all the time on the hang, this is just enticingly going up and down, especially on a canal with a bit of flow, that's just there. And then I move it again, 
and then drop it again slowly. So I try to mimic either a dying fish with this, with this spoon tail shad. It's no good ripping one past, you know, occasionally it does work, but I like to just mimic a dying fish so it looks like an easy target for a pike to get. And that's one type of lure, that's the Norris spoon tail shad. Another type of lure I like to use for jig fishing is a creature bait. Now, if you have a look at this thing, this is a Kichi Chichi 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 Chichi. I'll give up on trying to do Japanese, but it's one of them. These, <laughs> they look like nothing on earth, but for some reason, on really, really tough days, I don't know what it is, these really do come up trumps. Small jig head, I like to use five gram maximum really, it doesn't matter how deep the water is because I want it to completely flutter down. It's got legs at the front that seem to break the motion as he comes down and then his head's wiggling and then you've got this enticing tail. And what I like about this one, this is one of my favourite colours, I've got no idea what the colour's called, I'm not even going to try and produce what it is. 171, that makes it easier. This tail here has got holes in it, and if you can just see, really really good plastic, Japanese quality plastic and it, again it's just enticing on the bottom. So you can either fish that on the drop or this one, because it's so light and I use a five gram jig head, it just twizzles, you know, really enticing again. And they don't half hammer that. Perch and pike really do seem to like this one. It's one of my favorite lures, that. So you might think that uh, I've got some crazy casting style. It isn't a crazy casting style. I'm using a pretty light jig. What I'm trying to do is impart action into it. So I'm just giving it a, a little swing. And as I say, the technique with these baits is I'm just going to fill the line as she drops down. It's quite a shallow jig head. I'm just going to let her drop up and let her drop down. And because it's got loads of this kidgy heart of grub, it's got loads of these little tentacles, what it's doing those are really, really important actions that drop down. So as you say, lift up, drop. Now this might seem weird to anybody using jig fishing, but I'm not going to do anything, anything at all. I'm just going to watch that line and just leave it completely on the hang. Give it a couple of minutes. There might be something following it. A few reels, bring it up again, let it drop. I'm just letting it hang. It's doing nothing, it's just stopping on the hang. There's no rush to bring these jigs in, you know. You, just, you don't want to keep rushing them. Just up, let it hang. And leave it there for a couple of minutes. So even when you're fishing those grubs down the edge, just a little lift and then a hang. I like to keep a touch on the, on the line all the time. So I've just chucked it out, I've reeled it and I'm hanging. It's just staying there hanging. It might seem completely alien to anybody, you know, that you're just leaving a lure there and then just letting it hang. But they do watch it all of the time. They're just watching it. Mate, is that on? <laughs> Look at this. Uh, there was no action whatsoever imparted into that. None at all. And I've got, I don't know what this is. I hope it's a fish. Testing me bloody drag. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Might be a big one. There's a camera on. You, can't, you, can't, you, you just can't explain that. You just put it, it's, it's everything into proper practice, that is. Oh, here she is, a little girl. It's just, you know, it's just on the hang. So it's creature bites. Yeah! <laughs> That's proper poetry in motion, that. As I said, chuck it out. Watch those little tails go down. And you can see, I don't know whether the cameraman can have a look at this. You can see. That's exactly where I want it. There's the rubbery tail and there's the fish. I'll get her measured and put her back, you know. But all the time, you know, these fish have probably seen everything along this stretch. I've seen them dragged across their faces, everywhere. Just picking it up and dropping that, that hang is absolutely, I think it's vital for Xander, for pike, anything. A lot of Polish guys taught me exactly how to do this and the hang is very important. So let me measure her and then I'll get her back. She's a fatty. There you got 60 odd centimetres of pike. Just on the hang, as I said, it was just stopped there. Just those creature baits from Eco Gear. You just let them wiggle all the way down and just stop them. Look at that. Brilliant. Mm. You big tough girl. Let's put her back.
Okay, another type of bait I like to use for jig fishing is imitation baits, which basically what I'm trying to do is imitate exactly what the pike, the perch, or the chub are feeding on. And this one in particular is probably the only one in the range that I can pronounce, bald. So uh, it's easy for me to pronounce, and I'll always remember this one. But if you have a look at it, it's quite a high quality bait, this one. It's because it's got your standard paddle tail, again, for wiggling. Perfect balance for retrieve, so it doesn't spin and look out of, all, out of the ordinary. And it's got this kind of like scent on it. I don't know what it is, but you know how we all moan about either filling up a fuel diesel on your hands, whatever. This scent on it, it, it doesn't seem to work. Once they hit this, they hit this, they really do. And it's got these tiny scale patterns in, which I like on a lot of my imitation baits. Really like a scale pattern going on. Eyes that don't come out. Nice bit of quality bait that. And this is really versatile. I'll show you how to, hook, un, how to hook these things in a minute. There's different ways of hooking the bait. And this one is one of my favorite with a little trick and I'll show you that one in a second. So one thing I take for granted is actually how you hook a jig head on. Well, it is pretty simple, but we all have to start somewhere. What I usually do, this is exaggerated the size of jig head to this spoon tail shad. But what I usually do is just marry the thing up first. So I take the jig head and a bit of lead and then marry him up where the hook point's going to become exposed. So I know roughly the hook point's coming out there. And all I do, marry it up again just to make sure, is that through the nose I just basically inch and inch this through. Now I know my exit point is going to come through there and slowly I'll push him up to there and there you have it. It really is as simple as that. Nice and straight, no wobble coming out the right way. That's all you've got to do to an hook, hook a jig head. All you've got to do now is throw it out and catch a 30 pound pike. It's as simple as that, I wish. A blade spin. Don't know whether you've seen these. It can turn a normal lure into something pretty exciting. And all I'm doing, it's quite difficult here because it's all fingers and thumbs. If you can see, I haven't finished it off there. So I'm basically, it's got a screw on the bottom and a high quality ball bearing swivel. And all I'm doing is just basically screwing him into the bottom of my lure. Now when I'm retrieving that, not only have I got the paddle tail, but I've got this, mm, this vibration. Do you want me to do that for you again? Ooh, this pike thing, as it's going through the water, it's making like a vibration. And, uh, Sometimes pike find it irresistible. If they don't, I do. I think it looks lovely. So after I've exhausted everything, again, I'll just try this other thing. I'll just chuck him out with the blade spin on and retrieve. If that's not working, I'm gonna have to move, I think. Standard retrieve again, you know, it's just chuck it out and hopefully a pike will bring it back. But all I'm doing is I'm making a bit of noise. Don't know what noise it is, but I'm making some noise. Come on, fishy. One of my uh, favourite and probably the easiest to use jig bait of all time is the Paramaxis 5 inch. And um, when I say easy to use, all you have to do is throw it out and bring it back. The lure imparts all the action. You don't need to do anything with the rod whatsoever, it's just a standard retrieve. You can alter the retrieve, you can do it fast, you can do it slow, but I'll hit on that later on. And all you do basically is just put it on as a jig head. If it's too long, five inches, and I'm using smaller jig heads, I'll bite your head off. Simple as that. I don't know what it tastes of. But just bite your head off, put the jig on so it's just on the tail there. That also saves the tail catching up. Or if you want, you can use it with a stinger, jig head and a stinger. And all you do with this bait, the Paramax, is just retrieve it. It's, it really is as simple as that. You don't have to jig, don't have to drop. Just chuck it out, retrieve it, and a fish will bring you back for you. So one of my last favourite lures and jigs is, you might be surprised to see it, but it's the grass minnow. It's so, it's just unbelievably versatile. You may have seen me using it before on a drop shot. It's one of my favourite drop shot lures but coupled with one of these Shirasu heads, the really sharp hooks, these can be absolutely devastating for anything. You'll notice I haven't got wire on this one, I've just got a heavy fluorocarbon. It's probably because I'll be targeting perch around the little nooky holes or just chucking into weeds where hopefully a pike's not gotta be. Um, but that's basically my go-to fish catcher. If I wanna catch a fish on the jig, 
Nothing's happening on the drop shot, nothing's happening on anything else. I put one of these little things on grass minnow on a tiny shirisu head with an ultra, ultra sharp hook. So it's not just big stuff, you know, jigging is. It's not just for big stuff and pike. You can catch a lot of fish on these. Grass minnows, love them, love them. So I don't know what I've hooked here, but this is the grass minnow, you know, I was using a tiny little grass minnow. I've changed from using the, uh, before I was using the creature bait, and trying to catch pike, anything. And I've just come again, you know, I'm always on about structure. And I've hooked something here. She's fighting really strange. It might be a pike, so I need to take care because as I say, you know, this is a, oh yeah, it's proper going for it. I've got no idea what we got on. Oh, Mike, it's a bream. <laughs> it's a proper bream. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And grass me look at that. <laughs> oh, mate. I'll tell you what, that's a fail bream as well. I bet half the winter league would go mad for one of these. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know. Look at that, proper snotty. Let's pop her on some soft grass. See the importance here of a grass minnow look and the shirisu head, what I was talking about. The shirisu head, they need to be dead sharp if you're using them great big jigs that everybody sells. I don't know what they are, but the hooks aren't gonna penetrate. They is proper sharp. Look at that. A big old slab of dabba doo on the grass minnow. I'll tell you what's great from this. Look at that. I don't know whether they'd let me get away with measuring that. I'll tell you what's a good fish that. I'm sure people would be pleased as punch on the pole catching that bugger. I would, especially in the winter league. Look at him. Munchy. Stinks as well like an old sock. <laughs> I'm going to get her back. Look at that. Nice proper surprise that. Old Brasm. Go on girl. Left me slime on. So let's talk about techniques. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. This is not the Church of Steve and you have to do it this way. These are just techniques that I use a hell of a lot to win a few competitions. And as you see, I'm using which, which I like to call my retrieve bait. So all I'm doing is just casting out and retrieving it. Now, when faced with a water like this, usually what I see a lot of people do, and a mistake that they make, is they cast over and they cast over and they cast over and they keep casting over. What I like to do is section this out. And what I want to do now is do like a little fan so I'll start off my casts, well, I'll start here, let it sink and retrieve. Then I'll go another foot out, let it sink and retrieve. And as you can see, I'll be cutting this whole section into a fan before I even think about giving up. But I wouldn't give up then. Then I'd use a different technique where I'd fish it higher up in the water or I'd start jigging. But I'd repeat the process time and time again, all fan casting. But because I've got a straight retrieve bait on, all I need to do is I'll just cast it down the side I use a steady retrieve. I'm just searching the water, you know, just trying to figure out what's going on there. I've cast out close to the bank now. And I'll cast out a couple of feet further. And if you get the impression, it's just a fan. I'm going through a fan process. So after I've pretty much covered this peg, uh, there's one little spot that I haven't covered yet. And uh, the only reason I haven't is because it's got an overhanging mast and a bit of rope. Now usually that's proper out of bounds, but when you're jig fishing, you can just literally bow cast. So all I'm gonna do is put a bit of tension on and I'm gonna flick, get right under that mast. And I love a bit of structure, you know, I like a bit of structure. So I've cast it just under there. I'm not causing overhand casting. I'm not chucking it or over chucking it. All I'm doing is just pinging my uh, jig head over there and then covering a little bit more water. So the next technique I like to use with jig heads is uh, my imitation baits, which is the bolt. And as you can see there, I don't know whether the camera can pick that up, that's only a tiny jig head really. I don't think it's even five grams. It is five grams because it's got a big five on it. That gives you a clue. But usually people opt for these big tens and twenties when fishing these kind of waters. I've looked at five gram because I've got six foot of water today and I'd go even lighter because the way I fish these is I want to imitate a fish, either fleeing a predator and then acting as if it's dying. So basically it's the same kind of cast, just chucking it out. I've done the fan cast, this is just for these purposes. 
and I let it sink. I like to feel the line as it goes down because sometimes you can get a knock just as it drops down. And then with five gram, I just hit the deck there and I give it a slow little one, two, three, and then drop all the way, keeping in touch with it all the time. One, drop. Then a quick retrieve, drop. And I'm trying to keep it as natural as if it's a fish being chased by something else all the time. And just a little drop and a little drop all the way. Now, one other tip that I can give you is when people usually bring these lures in, they've chucked them out, and then as soon as they get to the rod tip, they bring it straight out. You're missing a lot of water here. You might be standing right over it, but sometimes there's a predator just hiding right down here. And again, just making it look as if it's a, a fish being chased. Give it a little bit of movement. I'll jerk again and then out, because you can see that paddle tail really is going to move and it lends itself to the dropping bit of it. So it's a jig, a drop, jig, a drop. Simple, really. For some reason, they've uh, chose the middle of December and freezing cold weather to make me come out and do this and show you what jig fishing is all about and uh, it's tough today but the force is strong my uh my uh, uh, imitation bait game is proper strong when i put the pink one on i mean business when the pink one goes on don't you worry it's going to bring me back a pike i just don't know how big i want it 20 30 any of them will do yeah bugger me uh pink bolt game strong with these I, I like to use these when absolutely everything's gone tits up i suppose and there's that much bait fish out there at the moment they just seem to i don't know i don't know what it is i don't know whether this one is slow jigged i no idea snag we oh, yeah. are <laughs> another one straight on that must have seriously followed this everywhere. It looks like a big girl as well. Oh no. One thing you've got to do as well with these light rods and these sharp hooks is proper set the hooks. I mean, I proper give it some on this. It's uh, not a big fish, but another at least 60, 70 centimetres, I suppose. I think as well with these rods is because they're so soft. Yay! <laughs> is it sometimes they don't even realise they're hooked, you know, you just get them on the bottom, bring them up, they have a quick wallow, they don't even realise they're hooked. Ah, oh, that's heavier than it looks actually, I'm gonna get here unhooked. One thing as well with jig fishing is <sighs> let go, let go. Come on girl, let go, thank you. Is uh there's no messing about with trebles. There's no messing about anyway. You can just unlock them pretty quickly. Just going to measure this. She ain't going to be a massive fish, but hopefully she'll be over 60. There you go. Yeah. 60. Might be 75 on my small mat. All very welcome. And again on the pink stuff. I'm going to drop her back. They're all gorgeous, fearsome. It's been really tough today and the fish are striking, there's fish everywhere and I, just, I can't help that. And I think what's happening is, when, when foods are such, is such abundance, is that they've only got to eat one fish, them that are flashing, they're eating one fish, they're gone, they don't want anything to do with me. So all I'm gonna put on now, I got my beastie pink bolt that's doing the business and I put a bit of jingle jangle jewellery on a, one of these blade spins. I'm gonna wake one up. If I don't catch him, don't entice him. I'm gonna wake him up. Come on, pikey pikey. Weed. No, it's not, it's not a fish again. I can't tell you, the boys are that subtle today. I think, no it ain't. Is it a fish? Oh, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. The boys are that subtle. It's unbelievable. 
it's just as if there's somebody's hit a switch because I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's just it must be pike o'clock. That's the word for it. But it shows as well. I've just a few little changes. I've just rung those changes and uh, we're into a fish. Oh, I could see her angry as hell. Angry as hell. She's fell to me a little bit of jewellery. That's where it is. Got jingle jangle. She's all embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, love. And now, in true presenter style, because it's live, you're going to see me back up and reach for my net. Because silly Billy here has left the net from catching my last fish. So, as you can see, it's all live. Expertly done. And we can edit that bit out as well. Don't worry about that. I know what I'm doing. I do all my own stunts. She's got jingle jangle on, she's got earrings. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Quick release. How about that? Pulled out of the net. Look, if you can't be good, be lucky. Let's have a look at that. Again, they're all peas in a pod, you know. A beautiful fish, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous. I'd say she's probably 60 odd centimetres again. Look at that eye, she's looking at me saying, can't believe you conned me with just a piece of earring. So here's a little tip for you as well with jig fishing, you know, what I see a lot of people doing is, and again, you know, this isn't the Church of Steve, you haven't got to do it this way, but it does help you, is that I see a lot of people with their rods in the air when they're jig fishing. Now what's going to happen is if you do get a fish and you strike, if you look at that, all I've done is move that tip 12 inches and the bend in the rod is probably going to go 12 inches as well, so you haven't really set a hook at all. And if you've seen me today, I fished my rod pretty low to the ground, or the water, and all I've done is a sweep. It's been a harsh sweep, a sweep, and I've been in. There's been none of this striking up in the air. It's just basically a sweep. And all that does, it gives you a much bigger arc, and you can really feel it angling to the fish, you know, and you've hooked the fish proper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely pike o'clock now. The jingle jangle's done the same. It's done the business. I wonder how many times these lures have been past these fish, and then just a little change. I don't want to worry anybody, but it's like moving a fat lot. And when I don't move a lot, it scares the bejeebas out of me. <clears throat> because I hope it's a fish, it is a fish. But when I don't move, I'm telling you now, they're usually a big girl. She ain't shifting at all. Oh, this is this is the proper heart stuff. This is this is uh, this is why we go fishing. She's done an head knock. I know now because jacks just usually get bonkers everywhere. I know now that this is uh, this ain't going to be no jack. I say that it's probably a tyre. I've hooked a tyre. <laughs> proper. It's like the nerves, the jelly leg all goes. Oh, just seen her. I've just seen her. Look at that. That's a crocodile. <laughs> yeah, crocodile. <laughs> it's got some jingle jangle jewelry hanging out of her as well. Proper crocodile. Jeez. <gasps> I'll tell you what. I'm being proper cautious with this now. She's uh, she's hanging on, all right. Bless her. Where's she going? She's got a right sulk on. This is amazing, this is. 
If you could see what I can see, this is big head and big tail. That's what makes it to this kind of fishing. Oh, look, crocodile. <laughs> come on, come in quietly. Come on, come to Stevie. 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 She's come to Stevie. <laughs> I ain't even going to be able to lift this badger. Oh yeah! That's a weight. That's a nice fish that is. I'm going to go and get my bat and everything ready. And I'll knock her. But jeez, what a way. That's going to be my last fish that is. What a way to end the day. And I said, you know, just, I don't know whether you can see it in there. I'm going to show you. It's not like advertising hype. I don't know whether you can see. See that blade? It's made all the difference. I bought that back hundreds of times past that same spot every time i brought it back that spot different retrieves dropping it the static drop i've caught fish doing that and then all of a sudden i just put that blade on and i've enticed her and well <laughs> what a way to end the day brilliant look at that thing she's got fooled by steve's eco gear jingle jangle rig bless her she's absolutely gorgeous i tell you what she weighs a bit as well what a way to end the day. Jig fishing, well, there it is in a nutshell. And in this video, I hope I've illustrated to you that, you know, there's a whole thought process going behind jig fishing. You know, it's not a case of just chucking a bit of lead out with a bit of plastic attached and retrieving it. There's a whole lot of techniques you can add. There's different lures you can use. There's little tips, as you've seen in the video, you know, just by attaching a little spinner to it. It really does make a whole lot of difference. And the thought process behind it, you know, if you just put a little bit of that into your jig fishing, it's going to improve your fishing no end, I tell you. And if you've enjoyed the video half as much as I have making it and catching them wonderful fish, I tell you what, we're all onto a good one. Just go out and give it a go. Stick, 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 stick,